Hi guys, Glader here, and today I have another update on the RS317.sharp project. And today I'm going to be demonstrating with the custom networking, uh, the ability to query for names. I'll talk a little bit about that process and also entity data replication. That's going to be demonstrated with player levels. So let's hop right into the demonstration right now. I have uh, one of these builds is a recent build and one of these is an old build, so you can you'll actually see that some of it works on one and doesn't work on the other. So let's log in and you can see on the bottom after a uh, game frame redraw you can actually see the name of the player which is different than the account name. It doesn't have to be but it just happens to be that accounts are separated from characters in this design. So um, on this client we can actually right click and you can see that this player's name is Test org. He's the remote player, and we can actually see his levels one. That's actually replicated, and if it changed on the server, you know we'd receive an update for that as well. Uh, it doesn't work anything like the RS317 protocol. It works basically like Quake as well as World of Warcraft because it's, but uh, they based it on Quake as well. Highly inspired from that. The low-level API exists for replicating entity data like this efficiently, basically sending deltas. But uh, the, the high-level API to high, sort of hide that doesn't exist yet. And uh, let's talk a little bit about names. So every entity is associated with an entity GUID. Uh, it's globally unique, and you basically are never, never address entities by name. You address them by the GUID. And so when we actually encounter this, you can think of it almost like the PID, but it's 64-bit. Uh, when we encounter this, we do a remote query to ASP Core Server over HTTP, and we basically ask for the name of the entity, and we actually get the name. So there's actually a short time window where if you were to right click on this fast enough, it would say unknown, but it gets updated. And then you'll eventually see the player's name. This is significantly more efficient, a better way to do these sorts of things. And it's how World of Warcraft handles names. So that's pretty much it for this demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and work on uh, skills. So you'll pull down skills over HTTP, at least the initialization. And basically the server will just let the client know when it's dirty. And it'll requery at this. This takes a significant burden off the real time game server for actually sending actual skills and experience updates and stuff to players. So, you know, that's, that's going to be a good thing. And I'm going to do that soon. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.